It's Tuesday, April 11th, and this is Geek Nights. Tonight, we talk about Tetris DS, but you're going to have to wade through a whole bunch of other stuff we talk about until you get to it. So, if you only want to hear about Tetris, fast forward now. Let's do this. Well, before we actually get into the news and the show and all that, as we usually do, we have some meta-type things to say, but they're somewhat unorthodox today. Unorthodox, you say? Could they possibly be conservative or reform? <laughs> yeah, or maybe yeah. they're more than orthodox. They're Hasidic. <laughs> All right, that was not funny. Lubavitches? Anyway. You don't know who Lubavitches are? No, I don't. I'll explain it to you sometime. Okay. They're, the, they're like the craziest of Jews, the Lubavitches. Okay. All right. All right, so as I said yesterday, and I'm going to say every day this week, of course, I'm going to explain it a lot less than I explained it yesterday. The forum sends you an email when we approve your membership to the forum, unlike other forums where you're immediately automatically approved. However, some people have spam filters, and those spam filters are blocking the email. And as a result, there are many people who have applied for membership to our forums who have been accepted, and they've never come back. If you never come back because you're not listening anymore, well, you're not listening anymore. If you haven't come back because you didn't get an email saying you were approved, guess what? You got approved. Come and sign into the forums and have fun. We've never turned anyone away yet. Not yet. However, one person who heeded this call yesterday, the Flaming Geek, or the Flaming Geek, or... Now, I'll warn you right now, this is not something we're going to do often. Now, those of you who've been listening long enough know that we're very intolerant of certain things, namely uh, pseudoscience, Scientologists, lying... Stupidity in general. Bad grammar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All those sorts of things. Well, we're opinionated. Uh, for for this, some background information, someone applied to the forums a long time ago named like the Flaming Geek or whatever, and I approved them, and they never showed up. Uh, of course, I'm pretty sure it was due to the email problem, because uh, they applied again a few weeks later, and I approved their, their second account. And okay, they still didn't show up. Then I discovered the email problem, and yesterday I made the announcement on the show, and today the Flaming Geek signed into his account and started posting. Now, at first we thought, all right, a new member to the forum. The forums are growing very quickly. Yep, awesome. Now, uh, I hate to directly call someone out, but I'm very much a fan of calling people out, so I actually don't hate this at all. (laughs) Yeah, and um, after examining all the evidence, there is only a .001% doubt on our part. So I guess I'll say this right now to the Flaming Geek. If you can prove us wrong, you will not only be interviewed on the show for being awesome, but we'll probably give you some money and maybe some prizes. Yeah. So, the Flaming Geek, you do not live in Japan. It is painfully obvious. We are fairly certain that you live in or about Miami, Florida. Your name is Juan. We're pretty sure you are Hispanic, and you can't be old. You, you're either... You, you either grew up speaking Spanish and are very poor at English, you, or you are so young that you have not received sufficient education as to speak English properly. Or, or there is the sophisticated answer that you are pretending to speak English poorly in order to bolster the image that you were living in Japan. Or you just are the kind of kid who goes through school getting terrible grades and nah. you're not smart and you don't study and... Yeah. Yeah, Scott will really lay into you. I'll, I'll do it slightly more civilly, but... That's fine. The, the fact remains... We could, we could do a lot worse. The fact remains that I was mostly tipped off when you didn't seem to understand Japanese when it was written in Romanji, yet you claimed to be able to read it or type it in the actual kana, but you can't speak it or know what it sounds like, which is really odd to me because Japanese is really syllable based and the sounds and yeah yeah now here's a hint for people who want to lie about something don't be samir gupta we will tell samir oh my god samir gupta is like my favorite guy ever we will tell the story of samir gupta in a future episode of geek night suffice to say he has for at least seven or eight years been living a charade a lie on the internet of epic proportions I'm going to say it in one sentence. He goes on Slashdot and pretends that he worked for every video game company ever. When now, he, of course, has never worked for a video game company ever. Now, the scary thing isn't that people believe this dude. Because no one believes this dude. No, a lot of people do. Well, no, people don't believe him over time. People believe, like, they see one post, and they're like, and it, one post looks good. Yeah, but, over, everyone, but as soon as you point out this guy has a history of lying, people are like, oh, he's now, lying. Now, the scary thing is that if you search on Usenet, 
you find a guy posting like in the early 90s under the same name making the same kinds of claims either it's a conspiracy or it's one dude we don't know but that's for another episode i think it's like zaro he just passes the mantle on it could be the point is is that if you're going to lie about something like Let's say I wanted to lie about being from Japan on a forum somewhere, right? All right. Number one, I would learn a lot about Japan, and before I said anything about Japan, I would look it up and make sure I was saying accurate stuff, and that if anyone tried to challenge me by saying, you know, name all the prefectures of Japan, or name the adjacent prefectures, or what street do you live on, I would be, I would have that shit down. You know, don't you watch enough movies with this, <laughs> like, Hannibal and stuff, and he gets everything perfect, you know? Yeah, well, Hannibal was a uh, transhumanist, so... Yeah. Two, yeah. don't keep mentioning it. I mean, he posted on the Frapper map that he was in Tokyo. All right, All no right. big deal. He posted in his profile that he's in Tokyo, or Japan. All right. He said in his post, you know, about himself that he was from Japan. All right. Then it seems like half his posts are like, yeah, I'm in Japan. Yeah, I'm having trouble with the Japanese keyboard. Oh, my God, isn't it so crazy that it's so late here, yet I'm still posting? He said that like two or three times. Then he doesn't know what someone means when they say kawaii desune. Yeah, it's like, that really got me there. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're going to lie, you got to be on top of your shit. Yep. Number three, if you're going to lie about something, and for whatever internet reason, you know, fake online persona... You've really got to not make too many extraordinary claims all at once. I mean, born in London, moved to Miami, then moved to Tokyo. All right. Tiny ass little apartment in Tokyo. All right. Terrible English grammar, yet you, and you use a Japanese OS, and yet, yet you don't know spoken Japanese. All right. A short dude buys you groceries every week and you don't understand him. Huh. You don't leave your apartment and you you have some contract with some job that you can't talk about that requires you to stay in this little apartment and But never yet leave. you can say that you have the job with a contract that you're not allowed to talk about, but you can't talk about it. And then you bring up the fact that you can't talk about it. It's obviously a poorly, not so well thought through, made up story by a little kid. Also, uh, I would point out that if you're going to lie about something like this, uh, someone's going to trace your IP address at some point. And I traced your IP address to the area of Miami, Florida. Now, you might make up some story like, oh, my roommate did something or whatever. But first of all, you said you live in a little tiny box. And second of all, there is no way you could have a Miami IP address in Japan. No, none. Well, there's, Zero. there's one way. If he had someone in the U.S. who was on Bell South DSL. <laughs> because like that's my where grandma. My to. grandma's on Bell South DSL. Run an HTTP proxy for you. And then you connect to that, and then from there, connect to the rest of the internet. That is possible. That is possible. It is, however, ludicrous. It is so ludicrous that if anyone actually were to set that up, I would pay you a dollar. <laughs> um, really? Really. All right, I'll set one up tonight for Emily, who's currently in Japan. No, 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 you have to set it up on Bell South in Florida oh. for someone in Japan. Bell South in Florida. Why not Comcast up here in Beacon? We don't have Comcast. We have cable oh yeah, vision. whatever. We have we have C Star Optimum cable. Online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So Fleming Geek, uh, either you have to post on the forum with sufficient evidence to convince two people who are much smarter than you that you are actually <laughs> in Japan, as well as many many people who know a lot more about Japan than you seem to know. Yes, I mean... Uh, including people we know in person that are Japanese people that speak Japanese. Or how about the fact that Emily is currently living in Japan right now? In fact, I talked to her over Skype last night. Right. Emily, who's been on the show before. So, yeah. unless you can prove to us with some sort of forum post that you all your claims of Japan are actually correct... Um, you're going to be ridiculed a great deal. So if you're a mature, intelligent person, you will come clean. Yeah, if you come clean, that's fine. I mean, we're not going to ban you or anything. We, we want you to listen. Just uh, don't lie to us. Yeah, because, um, and this is a note to everyone else out there listening to Geek Nights. We're the last people on earth that you can fool. Like <laughs> I, I, We don't want to sound like we're conceited well, no, about no. this. But... We're not the last people on earth that you can fool. It would be, it would be harder to fool perhaps James Randi. Possibly. You could, there could be a fooling, a con, that could get us, but Randy would I'll see point out it. that we've gotten to the point when we'll disbelieve something that is true longer than most people would have disbelieved it. 
Yes. We disbelieve just about anything and everything we see and any claim anyone makes that is not completely mundane. But you know what? We seem to be always right. What's up with that? <laughs> eh, not always. Well, 90% of I the time. I wasn't right about uh, freaking Boulder Hill, Boulder Mountain. Yeah, but that's a stupid thing. <laughs> yeah. I-, I am proud that I was right about the Korea thing, even though I... See, the thing is, is you, I was I was in the right on that one. You guys are arguing about it, so I said, I'm going to fucking look it up. And I found a picture of the thing, and I'm like, well, there's the answer. Yep, I was gonna, and then you beat me to it, and I saw it, I was like, oh... Yep. Oh well. Though you know what came out of it? I've discovered that my mass toys are worth well over a thousand dollars. Well, it's time to convert some useless pieces of plastic. But they're awesome. Into, I want to keep. Well, the thing is, you want to keep useless pieces of plastic instead of converting them into useful gadgets. Um, I point out one that you have a lot of useless pieces of plastic. Those useless pieces of plastic cannot be converted into useful gadgets. Two, uh, more importantly, I have two of every mass toy, with a few exceptions. You so, had two uh, Boulder think, Hills, and yet you still thought they were called Boulder Mountain. Uh, uh, actually, someone posted that, that in the German dub, it was called Boulder Mountain. But And the thing is, I found out that, one, Wikipedia said Boulder Mountain. So did half the internet. I edited Wikipedia to be correct. Mm-hmm. But Honestly, anyway, my stance on the issue is that when they were making this show, and they said, huh, what do we call this base? Well, it's a mountain hill thing. What, what should we call it? I know, we'll call it Boulder Hill. Uh, should we call it Boulder Mountain, maybe? No, Boulder Hill sounds better. Boulder Mountain sounds a billion times better than Boulder Hill. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck any other human on Earth would have ca- but given a choice between Boulder Hill and Boulder Mountain. would have chosen Boulder Mountain immediately. What is wrong with these stupid mask show-making hey, guys? Hey, you. you know what was awesome about mask? It had some of the best toys ever. Yeah. Hence the fact that they go for a lot of money. Did they transform? Yes. You need to transform. Do they combine? Some of them do. All right. You need transformation and combination. Not only do they transform the and combine, are the two most important aspects they, of any toy. Every one of them comes with dudes. The dudes have big masks with powers that go on and off very well. The dudes are articulated, and they're all perfectly interchangeable. Like, everything interacts with everything. All right, like Lego. Also, I'll point out that if you had the Ninja Turtles Technodrome, it is the best base for mask men ever. Far and far and above Boulder Hill. Yeah, I don't have a Technodrome. I had uh, Thundercats. My mask men lived in uh, the Technodrome, I had and they the laid Thunder- siege to Boulder Hill. Yeah, the Thundercats lair is awesome. It had the, little, the headlights in the head. And oh, I could, always wanted that. I have it. It's in my attic. You want to go get it? We should get all our toys and play with them. I could bring it here. I could, I'm going home. <laughs> we could get a picture of that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, it's in the attic, though. All right, that's enough meta bits. Uh, we have some actual news. Now, mm-hmm. Scott's news is a little old, but we've been talking about it, the two of us, pretty much quite a bit for the last week, so we have to talk about it. Yeah, this is sort of a rant I've got about Star Wars, kids. Yeah, now, if you remember Scott's rant about Singapore, it'll probably be similar. It might be a little longer and less yelling. Yeah. I uh, want to do mine first, my news, because it's kind of sensational, and it's actually kind of current. All right, all right. All right, so uh, Dig had an article, what was it, yesterday? That the PlayStation 3, the headline of the article was that the PlayStation 3 is not going to be playable at E3. I read that headline and thought, wow, Sony's fucked. That's the end of that company. It, yep. it's, it's over. Mm-hmm. And then I laughed hysterically for like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Then we uh, clicked on the article and I discovered that Dig is perhaps the most sensationalistic news outlet in the world. I don't know what's wrong with it. It used to be that occasionally some article on Dig would have a crazy headline, and it would get a bunch of digs and show up on the front page. Now it seems that any article about anything of import, the headline, I mean, sure, when you were trying to summarize an entire article of information into a single sentence or just a few words, it's easy, it, it's quite difficult to include all the details. Yes, it's also easy to imply things unintentionally. It is easy to imply things unintentionally, but... The magnitude to which the headlines on Dig Bart doesn't even come close. Yeah, completely falsify and mislead people as to what the articles actually contain. And then even the paragraphs of description under the headline are even worse. They don't help you at Yet, all. Uh, Scott, were you the one saying that Dig is uh, better than Slashdot? And- it gets the... If you actually just read the stories and only use the headlines to figure out generally what yeah, the story is about. Yeah, you know what? About, if you're going to do that, you might as well use FARC because it has everything on Dig and more. Yeah, it doesn't have everything on Dig. A lot of times people dig other stuff like... Uh, I've never seen something that was on Dig that didn't also hit FARC in a, within a reasonable span of time. And honestly, the FARC headlines are usually much more accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also humorous. I think the problem with Dig is that they... People see that headline, they go, holy shit, and they dig it. 
And then, you know, the next day they read the article, mm-hmm. if they even look at the article. Uh-huh. I think a lot, I think, I don't think people seem to read articles at all. Like, um, RTFA. Yeah, we should do some sort of study, like, we find the people who actually read articles, and then we get those people together. And all the people who don't actually read articles, and we see, like, we watch their link farm just, like, continue to grow. People just linking to things without looking at them all over the place. <laughs> be crazy but anyway there was a tiny tiny grain of truth in the middle of the sea of lie and the truth is that the ps3 is not really going to have a big show at e3 most likely do you remember the show for the revolution at the last e3 where they had it behind like a curtain and you couldn't go in there and only a few people got invited to play with some cheap demos or like the psp at the last one when there was like one and they'd let like people come back and look at it yep That's what the PS3 is going to be like at E3 uh, in a month or so. Yeah, if all of this is to be believed, which honestly I'd believe it because once again I work for the freaking company making the chips. However, the revolution (laughs) will have, you know, booths everywhere. The Nintendo booth will be full of revolution stuff, crazy, crazy go nuts. People are going to be playing it. There's probably just going to be huge lines around the hall of E3 waiting to play with revolutions. Yep, I I don't want to sound like a fanboy, and I don't, I, I really have no like Nintendo fanboy leanings behind my following statement but i really believe that nintendo is going to regain the top position in consoles in this generation the ds is the new snes yes i mean seriously the ds alone right now oh my god it just came to me metal marines ds oh Oh my god oh yeah metal marines we'll talk about that another day if you remember the game metal marines post in the forum that game's awesome and we want to try to remake it yeah I have a vision, Metal Marines DS. Oh, that's a, vi- that's a good vision. Yeah. I'm with you on that vision. I see it. I see it. Yep. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. We should talk about the vision inside joke Actually, some someone noticed the vision inside joke and posted it. I think that was it. actually the Flaming Geek. I don't know who it, it might have been. I don't know who it was. It might have been. The story of the vision is simply this. We used to play Mario Party Hardcore. Like, as in, we had the world championship belts. Yeah, and you well, had we didn't over. have them, but the people... Well, would... of course we didn't have them. Yeah. We lost. Well, our friends, they, we, what, we played Mario t- uh, Party Hardcore, and they had, you know, the, re- the toy wrestling belts from Toys R Us, and whoever won would get the belts. Now, the one guy we played with, and I, I forget his name. I remember it, but I'm not going to say it. Um, what he would do is he would get the poison mushrooms and create the row of death and he would just make a row of poison mushrooms so that if you ever got around the board to this por- to this point you pretty much had to land on a poison mushroom because basically the poison mushroom if you don't know this game makes it so you really can't move very far yep and if there's a whole bunch of them you keep hitting them and you just get stuck here yep so whenever anyone got a poison mushroom he was like my vision you must make my vision become reality my and vision the vision became a thing yes the vision became a thing and we had rows and rows of poison mushrooms in every mario party now we have another mario party story that i'm saving for another day hooray the bamboo Oh, the bamboo. <laughs> uh, we, we are fairly invulnerable to many forces in this world. But the one force that took us down as a unit, as in we were routed, was a tiny three-inch tall piece of bamboo. So Star Wars kid. All right, Star Wars kid. This is Scott's rant. I will interject periodically. All right, so for those of you who don't know, Star Wars kid is that kid who made a video of himself swinging a broomstick around, pretending to be all Jedi. And then he left it in the equipment he recorded it, which happened to be in school. Yeah, he recorded it on some, like, AV club video camera. Some other kids found it and put it on the net. It became an overnight sensation. Like, Numa Numa sized crazy. So, uh, the kid who did the Star Wars kid, you know, the, the Star Wars kid, he wasn't so happy because he was, uh, you know... A uh, nerd, a fat, dopey kid who didn't have any friends and no life and got picked on and all that. Of course, after he became Star Wars kid, what started happening is kids bother him about it. It's it's only natural. He goes into school and kids are like, hey, Star Wars kid, woo! I think one of the stories is that in one class, they took the overhead projector and they were writing stuff on it. So they started sliding the piece of plastic with the writing on it up the overhead projector and go, and the whole class is like, Now, I'd just like to say at this point that if that were me and I had that level of fame suddenly, like that is the level of fame to the point that everyone on the internet, everyone on FARC at least, knew who I was. 
I would be all over that shit like a fanboy on something fanboys like. Some nudie sculptures, I don't know. <laughs> Life-size <laughs> naked anime chicks, whatever. Fanboys get, disgust me. Anyway. So, what yeah. happened recently? Well, wow, we're was, just kind of mean-spirited today. We are. It's it's mean day here on Geek Nights. Yeah. Grr. Well, we, we, but like we went biking, today. so we're all surly and physical today. Yeah, watch out. You don't want to get near us geeks. <laughs> I guess that's what daily podcast is, you know. The mood changes from day to day. Anyway, Star Wars Kid. What happened was recently, he sued the three kids who put the video on the internet. Now, if he would have sued them for, say, copyright infringement, you know, I made that video and you distributed it without my permission, I would have been like, all right, I don't like copyright law, but at least that's legitimate. I can live with that. No, he sued them for making him upset and picking on him. Now, I got to say, if someone picks on you by, say, beating you up, or stealing your lunch money. Or, like, harassing you in a real dangerous, threatening, or, like, damaging way. Or, you know, sexually harassing you. Or, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, racial that... things. Anything that's, like, like there's, there's an obvious line. And people might debate about the exact position of the line. But everyone agrees that there's a line between good-natured bullying and dangerous bullying. The line for me is when you infringe upon the rights of another human being. People have rights. And if you infringe upon the rights of someone else, then that's not okay. So I guess seeing Star Wars Kid in the street and going, Hey, Star Wars Kid! Ha ha! That's okay. Go into his house and, like, egging it. Or, you know, yelling at it through his window, Star Wars Kid! Woo! Not okay. Exactly. So, according to all the evidence that I've read and all the stories I've read, these three kids, all they really did was put this video on the internet. That doesn't cross the line for me. That's, you know, first of all, I'm against copyrights. That's freedom of speech. You're taking art and you're distributing it. You know, and even if they had, you know, sung the Star Wars song in school or been like, hey, Star Wars kid, whoosh, 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 and like, you know, you know, said things to him. That's freedom of speech. You're saying things. They're not saying fire in a crowded theater, you know, the classic example. I'm I'm perfectly within my rights to say, Rim, you suck cocks in hell. Yeah, you know it. So, the difference here is that Star Wars Kid is upset, not because of anything anyone else did. Because that's what people always try to do with bullies, is they try to say, the bully's the bad guy, and the Star Wars Kid is the victim. Well, sometimes that's true if the guy's beating him up or crossing the line, as we said before. I would generally say that probably more than half the time that's true, just because of the nature of the bullying I've seen kids undertake these days. But that's a whole different show. Yeah, if you want to argue, you know, it's it's. I'd agree with you that most bullies seem to cross the line a lot. However, we have no evidence that these guys cross the line, and whether they did or not, that's not my point. My point is, in general, if you don't cross that line. And some kid is being all upset because he's picked on, but the bullies never crossed the line, and they all they did was say stuff to him. Um, that's not the bully's fault. The bullies are doing things that they're perfectly allowed to do, and in some cases should be encouraged to do. And if you're a Star Wars kid and you're upset because other people are doing things that they're allowed to do, that's your fault. It's your attitude that is causing you to be upset, not some other kid's putting a video on the internet. If he had the attitude of being proud of being Star Wars Kid instead of an attitude of being ashamed of being Star Wars Kid, his life would be terrific. Or let's say he really couldn't deal with it and like the, maybe it wasn't over the line, but it was close to the line or just it was, it was getting to the point where it was really affecting his life. There are many steps between doing nothing and sucking it up and being miserable and filing a lawsuit. Yeah. I mean, there's standing up to the bullies if you can't do that, you know, going to your parents... And talking. Well, I think he did go to the parents. The parents are the ones who did the lawsuit or thing. Or going to the school. I mean, the school will usually... Well, actually, no. I could have a whole rant about the way schools deal schools with bullying. Schools don't deal with it properly at schools all. Schools deal with bullying. And for, basically, to, to sum this up, schools nowadays... And I didn't really believe this, but I've read so many articles lately where this happens. Schools will basically blame the victims of bullying now because the victims are more of a liability because when they get hurt, or when something happens, the school's liable. So they don't want to kick the bully out because then the bully's parents tend to also be that way and they'll sue the school. They mm-hmm. kick the victim out because the victim can't do anything and that way the school has no liability because no one's going to get hurt. Yep. 
It's the, it's all bullshit, but that well again, that's a whole other show. The other thing is that because of Star Wars Kid's attitude about being Star Wars Kid, he sort of brought it upon himself. If he had had an attitude of being proud of being Star Wars Kid, eventually people would have just gotten used to it and forgotten about it. See, I learned this lesson. See, people, it seems to me like it started on Slashdot, people seem to be against me, and on other websites, people seem to be with me. Yeah, Fark was mostly with you, I must say. Yeah, and Slashdot was against me, and it seemed to me that the people on Slashdot were against me or people who had been bullied as a kid, and they felt, they sympathized and empathized with Star Wars. Yep. Though I'll say right now, I was bullied when I was a little kid. I was bullied when I was a little kid, too. And you know what? Around this time, around some time, some kids started calling me Mr. Bean. Because I look kind of like Mr. Bean. Do yeah, I look like Mr. Bean? You kind of look like Rowan Atkinson. A little bit. All right. I didn't even know who Mr. Bean was. And these kids started going, Mr. Bean! And they were trying to make fun of me. And I realized that, that you know, I didn't, it didn't bother me. I was like, whatever. And then it started, you know, when they started calling me Mr. Bean, I was like, what up? And that was that. They called me Mr. Bean, but I didn't care. I didn't get upset. And... They're trying to pick on me failed, and that was that. They, didn't, they never crossed the line. All they did was call me Mr. Bean. Well, I but guess it, what, what I'd like to say to kind of direct this toward not just a rant, but actual useful advice or something, if you're bullied, if, if people bully you in general, I, we have a number of bits of advice on how to deal with this. Mm-hmm. Now, the first thing is, regardless of what you feel, you have to be really objective about yourself and wonder... Why are people picking on me? Mm -hmm. And you have to be kind of brutally honest with yourself. I mean, it's one thing if people are picking on you because, I don't know, you're gay or black or some religious thing. There's nothing you you can do about that. They have a right to be racist, but if they cross the line, you get some police action or something. Yep. Plus, you know, they have a right to be racist, but they also have a right to be assholes. Right. So let's say if I was black and there was a KKK guy walking down the street, you know, but I had the same attitude that. I do right now as being a not black person, um, you know, I'd be like, that's fine. He can be in the KKK. If he starts to burn crosses on my lawn, that cross the line, you call the police. Yep. But you have to be brutally honest with yourself because if they're picking on you because you're fat and you're fat, you should do something about that because it's not good to be fat anyway. Another- it might not be good for them to pick on you, but at the same time, it's not good to be fat. And unfatting will solve all of your problems. Exactly. And at the very least, if you can't unfat because you have such low willpower... Get help. Get help. Or at the, at the absolute minimum, be proud of being fat. I mean, I don't like people who are proud of being fat because it causes other problems in society, but at least you won't be unhappy. Or be a jolly fat guy who's cool. Yeah. And not a slovenly, disgusting fat guy. You know? Or yep. girl. <laughs> They're jolly fat people, you know, like those real happy fat people who are like, hey, what's up? Like Fat Albert, you know, it's all cool. Now, a lot of kids seem to think, oh, they're just jealous of me. Now, that may be true because, I mean, that happens. But It does happen. Really think about yourself objectively and think, all right, is that really true or am I just trying to make myself feel better about the fact that I'm actually Napoleon Dynamite? Yeah. Think about this. You know, you have, uh, you're, let's say you're a smart kid and stupid kids pick on you, right? Are they picking on the other smart kids? Why have they singled out you? I mean, sure, they're bullies. They got to find someone. But why was it you? They didn't pick you randomly. Yeah, I it's mean... It's not they... the Simpsons they, where they you know, give off some odor that attracts <laughs> bullies. There's a reason that they picked you. You have some sort of personality... Something about your personality that makes you a magnet to people picking on you. You have to change it. And if you change it, you will live be much, much happier, and you won't need to go th- jump through hoops to make the bullies stop. They're bad. Make them stop. Or stop in, you know, provoking them. <laughs> it's your fault, too. Now, the next step is, once you've realized why they're picking on you, and you've decided whether or not you can do something about it, uh, you have to decide what you're going to do. I mean, if, they're pick- if it's people who are picking on you for no reason at all, like you really can't find a reason, and they single you out exclusively, and there's nothing else you can do, I don't want to advocate violence, but if someone starts something, finish it. Here's another thing, a uh, piece of advice. Let's say you're in a classroom, right? Not ev- if, if every single person in the classroom is bullying you, that's a rare situation. Yeah, and that means something, either you're in a bad environment and you need to get out of there anyway, or something's wrong. Yes, something very wrong. So, usually what <laughs> would happen is... I like how this is video game day. I know, but right? Anyway, anyway. We'll get to the video games, don't worry, we're coming. Um, 
There are kids in the class who will be bullying you. There will be people getting bullied. And there will be normal kids in the class. If you're being bullied, right, ask the normal kids, like, you know, seriously, like, hey, man, listen, um, you're not bullied and I am, and I really kind of want to know, like, does anything I do annoy you or, you know, because I can bet you there's at least one normal kid who wants to bully you but is a smart, intelligent, mature kid and restrains himself. But there is something about you that he doesn't like, and they can probably tell you why you're bullied. Ask them. And I'll tell you this, not from personal experience, but from anecdotes and stories I've heard that that works. And there are a lot of people out there who will, if you ask, they'll be honest and they won't like they won't try to hurt your feelings. But they'll tell you, like, man, it's because you smell like I'm sorry, but you smell or some whatever it is. We are those people. Yeah. If you want to know why you're bullied, just ask us. And uh, Flaming Geek, if you start getting bullied, it's because you lied about being from Japan. Though if you come clean, we can guarantee you some form of, uh... no, I really can't. I don't know. <laughs> nah. You won't end up like Star Wars Kid. Yeah. Or... Well, Star Wars Kid could make a lot of money, or could have made a lot of money, in my opinion. Yeah, a lot of people in Slash are like, what if he doesn't want to make money? What if he doesn't want to be famous? Well, he All doesn't right. have to be, but... If he... your trouble in life is that you have to avoid fame and fortune, well... <laughs> I don't yeah, know what to say. you're not getting my sympathy, let me tell you that. Because it's not difficult to avoid fame and fortune and still maintain happiness. In fact, I would submit quite the opposite. Mm hmm. All right, we're done with Star Wars, kid. All right. Let's get to some video things of the day. So, anyway, things of the day. We Hooray. barely talked about video games. All the other stuff is over. Yep. Now, my thing of the day, the video I'm linking to is old. It is fairly well known. It is this guy, he's a cop, and he's in a classroom giving a demonstration. Does on, he work for the DEA or yeah, something? Yeah, he's DEA. He used to be a cop, he used to be a football player, all sorts of things. Prison guard. And he's doing a thing on gun safety and such. And he pulls out his Glock 40, and he's holding it there saying, this is unloaded weapon, it's a Glock 40. And he's talking it up all big and bad. I'm the only one professional enough to use this yeah, weapon. This is the, it's probably one of the most classic and ironic videos in the history of the internet. Because at the end of this long speech, he basically says, like Scott said, I am, probably, I am the only person in this room who is professional enough to handle this gun. And then he immediately, immediately shoots himself in the fucking foot. Not he, he pulls the trigger, goes bam! And he goes like, ah, The ah. bullet comes out and goes into his foot. It's it's freaking hilarious, and he's trying to pretend he's not hurt, but he's limping all around the room, and like he doesn't know what to do. And it, oh my god! So the news is the news is that this guy's back in. I mean, this happened quite some time ago. The guy is back in the news because he is filing a lawsuit against the government for basically allowing this video to be spread, thus defaming his good character and limiting his career options. Hello, Star Wars kid. Yeah. So a guy shot himself in the foot and with a loaded gun that he said was unloaded in front of a bunch of kids. He could have easily shot one of the kids. He's real lucky he didn't shoot one of the kids or something. He, then he'd be in jail and being guarded by someone like himself. And he's mad that because of this gross act of negligence and incompetence, he is now branded as a negligent and incompetent person. Gasp. Now, it's obvious to me that the lawyer he hired knows that this is bullshit or is stupid and one of his friends. Because I read part of the actual legal filing, and they introduce the uh, guy as a respected football player, and then they, they list all of his like, credentials, you know, work, blah, 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 work, blah, 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 commended, blah, blah, blah. But the primary one they list is that he was a respected football player. A judge doesn't care about your resume. A good judge doesn't care about your resume. All I have to say is I am going to follow this because if there's any way I can see a video of the trial, I will get it. Or if I can find a transcript of what the judge says, I will get it. Because when they show the video of him shooting himself in the foot in court, I would bet money that the judge will laugh. All, <laughs> and that's the end. Yeah. All are equal under the law. Be you president, be you Bill Gates, be you homeless bum, be you football player. No, 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 player. the president's not equal. Should be. Not while he's sitting, because he, the president can only be tried for high crimes and misdemeanors, and he can only be tried by the House. Yeah, it's BS, but should be. Yeah. Everyone should be equal under the law. Anyway, my thing of the day, this got to the top of Delicious Popular today, so I immediately tagged it with the Flim Flam tag. Just a note to everyone out there, if you ever see uh, something on the internet that's complete bullshit, put it on Delicious with a tag of Flim Flam. 
it's starting to spread. Some things we see that are flim flam get tagged by it before we get to them. Awesome. So, this video is on YouTube. Is supposedly a video of a guy with super acupuncture key powers. Now, I'm we as we talked greatly earlier in this episode, we are very uh, skeptical of I don't know everything. Basically, this video just reeks of bullshit. This guy is just a crock. Uh, the British guy who's there completely falls for it. The slightly skeptical camera girl also falls for it. The guy claims. That he has some sort of, like, electrical body power. Like, he zaps people and stuff. Now, in the video, you see people touch him and then go, ooh. Um, yeah, well, there's that dim mock guy who can uh, make his students pretend that they, like, pass out when he just touches them. Yeah, yet he couldn't make the reporter pass out, despite all of his efforts. Yep. So, there's a huge psychology thing going on there. And also, there's a whole bunch of stage magic going on with his, uh... You know, probably got a battery in there somewhere, maybe like a little shocking finger. The best is when he claims to set that piece of paper on fire with, you know, the cigarette that you can't really see so yeah, clearly. Yeah, he squishes a lump of paper to, of newspaper together, like, real tightly. Obviously, there's some sort of fire mechanism down there. Then, he puts it to the side and kind of points his hands at it, and then gets real close and it starts on fire. Hello? All I gotta say is... It doesn't bother me that this guy is some sort of charlatan, because I see so many charlatans, I just... Yeah, if you're gonna be a charlatan, go nuts. The fact that the reporters who are investigating him are such goddamn tools. Yeah, not only that, but how many people on Delicious and stuff believe this, and that's why they link to it, and that's why it showed up on Delicious Popular. Not everyone tagged it with Flim Flam. Very few people did, in fact. And on YouTube, there tend to be three types of comments. One, this, the people saying it's real and those people no one likes. Two, the people saying it's fake like us and those people that everyone likes, except for the third type of person who... Seems to be bothersome is that there are these people who think that you should be fair and such and such and such. They're like, this could be true. It might not be true. We have to investigate. Um, yeah, that's all well and good being fair and reasonable and open minded. But at the same time, you don't want to take that so far you become stupid. I mean, the extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The key word there is extraordinary. If I claim that I can burp, no one's going to not believe me. You don't need any evidence. <sighs> and there you have sufficient evidence. Because it is not an extraordinary claim, it only requires normal evidence. Now, if I claim that by burping, I can create a sonic boom, nobody should believe you. And if someone was going to believe you, we would have to have a whole lot of demonstrations to prove that your burps were actually causing sonic booms and such and such and such and such and such. And scientific studies and God. And without that, we all can only assume that uh, your burps cannot cause sonic booms because that is common sense. Sonic boom, sonic boom, sonic boom. Yeah, so the next time someone comes in your house and says your toaster can do uh, perform in a musical... If you want to be open-minded, you know, you can say it might be true. The toaster might be able to get up and sing and dance. Uh, the Flaming Geek might be in Japan. And this acupuncture guy, <laughs> oh my God, the acupuncture guy might really be able to zap you with electricity. He I might. would just like to say right now that during the episode, because we took a short break between the first half and the second half to, uh, I went and got a drink of water and Scott was picking at his face, but we got a message from our friend Katsu in the forums who was basically telling us that, yeah, I've pretty much determined that this guy isn't in Japan. And we've already talked about it. So, Katsu, yeah. you, we beat you to it, but props. Yeah, I mean, apparently when he was posting, like, oh my god, it's X o'clock in Japan, uh, you know, the forum sees what time you post things in Eastern time. So, if you compare the times, they're they're wrong. So... Then he said, oh my god, my watch battery is dead. You, you have a computer in front of you. You're, not, you're done. Yeah. Give it up. It's over. It's over. Wonder what it'll do when he hears this. Uh, you know what, Flaming Geek, if you give us some audio uh, feedback, that'd be awesome. Yeah, Flaming Geek, record an MP3 of uh, yourself saying something, or perhaps, you know, the sounds of the street in Japan where they're Japanese. I guarantee if you send us something, we'll probably play it. It'll be hilarious. Okay. Oh, and one last way, you know the acupuncture guy is fake. Um, if this was real, he, he supposedly says that anyone can do this. If anyone could do it, 
How come more people aren't doing it? How come the military isn't all over this? Yeah, if this was real, wouldn't the U.S. military be training every single soldier to have electrical set things on fire powers? I mean, a lot of people point to the fact that during the Cold War, the U.S. and the Russian governments both researched psychic powers as a means of espionage or combat or whatever. And it's true, they both did. And they didn't find anything, and that's why there are no psychic military units. Mm -hmm. They investigated it because they figured, hey, it won't cost that much, and we might as well see Well, anything that gives us an edge. And they discovered that, no, it doesn't. It doesn't do anything. It's stupid. And they, they quit. Just because someone studied something does not mean it's valid. Now, it means it's valid when someone studies something and then continues to study it and finds uses for it, and then it becomes an ology that's not made up. Yeah, it's very unlikely that something as amazing as the claims many of these people make would not be widespread in use by someone. Even if there was some massive conspiracy by, like, the pharmaceuticals to keep the magic onion that cures cancer away from the world, some doctor somewhere would say, hey, this onion cures cancer, and then you can't hide stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) And the fact, I mean, yeah. What it comes down to is if there really was an onion that cured cancer, more people than just a bunch of hippies in health food stores would be saying it. Everyone would be like, holy crap, and it'd be on the news, and it'd be like, pharmaceutical companies exposed hiding the magic onion. <laughs> it right. wouldn't just be right. hippies. We're done. We we barely talked about You know, we're talking about video games starting now. Video game time! We're going to talk about Tetris DS, which, in my opinion, is probably the current crowning achievement of Tetris. Tetris Perhaps- DS is the greatest incarnation of the game of Tetris Currently conceived by man. It is perhaps Tetris perfection to be rivaled only by future greater releases of the same game. If you want to know a lot about Tetris, it's actually this really, really good article interview with uh, one of the Tetris dudes on Planet GameCube, which usually doesn't have the greatest articles. So go read that and you'll learn a lot of shit about how they decide who can make a Tetris game and what they can put in it and all kinds of stuff. It's actually really interesting. Really interesting. But before we talk about Tetris in detail, the one thing I want to say, the, glowing, the most glowing recommendation I can make about it, and the greatest evidence I have for its awesomeness, is the fact that I am perfectly willing and in fact happy to spend $35 to buy Tetris in the year 2006. Again. <laughs> I paid $50 for Tetris for the NES in like 1980 whatnot, and other people paid like 30 bucks for it on the Game Boy. Yep. And then, uh, little note, I think Tetris is still the number one selling Game Boy original game ever. I think it is. It, it's, it, without Tetris, the original Game Boy would have hit the pooper. Yep, because the Game Gear was, well, exactly like the PSP. If the Game Gear had Tetris, it would have scored. That's what it was all about. It had a really. bunch of cool puzzle games. Not Tetris. It nah. had lousy, what was it, crystals or columns? Well, that or... and the Game Boy lasted you know, forever on those AA batteries. The Game Gear lasted about six minutes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I owned a Game Gear, so I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm ragging on something I love. Tetris. Oh my god. So, Tetris DS. First off, everything in Tetris DS has an old school retro Nintendo theme. You've got Mario's, you've got Zelda's, you've got Metroid's, you've got Balloon Fighters, the you've Doctor got Doctor Gy- from Gyromite. You got Gyromites. You got all the cool retro stuff. So if you're a Nintendo fan, the Donkey Kong's. Donkey Kong's actually the best one in this game. The music is fantastic. Like they take the old school beats and they spruce them up a little bit and consider that the sound chips the way sound is done in the ds is actually very very advanced and good this music in this game is the kind of music i wouldn't mind listening to on an ipod the best part is as you find songs in the game it unlocks them in a little like sound mode so you can go listen to the songs whenever you want yeah someone is probably going to rip them all to some sort of torrent collection that will then download and listen to regularly awesome okay so the single player of this has like six modes, I think. The modes are normal Tetris, uh, push mode, which is awesome. Yeah, we'll get to that. Touch mode, which is all right. Yeah, Puzzle I've... mode. Um, I forget the other modes because I don't really... Oh, mission mode, which is Link. Yeah, and... mission mode is cool because basically they give you a, a mission like get two lines at the same time with a line between them that isn't gotten. Or... Make a Tetris. Or or get three Tetris in a row. Make a line using the yellow piece. Yeah, stuff like that. And while that may sound dumb, when you play it, one, it's really fun. Two, it really 
teaches you how to be good at Tetris really quickly. I think that was what the guy said, is that mission mode is there to teach you techniques of Tetris that you may not have known, or that you may not realize in playing the normal game where you're just trying to make Tetrises. You know, sometimes you're playing Tetris and you get caught in a difficult situation, and you don't know what to do. And you can't really figure out a way to out uh, a way to save yourself, and you die. Yep. I mean, I play my personal Tetris style is that I drop pieces as fast as I can. As soon as I see a place where a piece could go where it will not directly harm me or make an open hole somewhere that I can't fill, I immediately drop it, which is very effective until I get a piece that doesn't fit in my little scheme. Then I'm fucked. Yeah. So mission mode. Because it forces you to do things besides just get as many lines as quickly as possible, often what will happen is you'll learn to do things in a non-obvious way that will create better Tetris situations for you. And I can attest to the fact that my Tetris skills have improved greatly due to playing mission mode. I will attest to this as well, because playing against Scott in Tetris, while I do not get completely and totally owned by him at all uh, fronts... He fairly thoroughly schooled me for a while until I finally started catching up a little. Yeah, two days ago I schooled this guy, but last night I was just getting hosed by these guys I was playing. Damn. They beat the shit out of me. All right. Now, the main thing about Tetris is, all right, I'm good at Tetris, whatever. I can play Tetris on my cell phone. Why is this a big deal? The answer to that is multiplayer. The multiplayer is insane. If you play uh, with people in the same within 30 feet of you, you know, a bunch of DSs and a bunch of friends, you can play, what, 10-player Tetris? Yep, and we did this at Ubercon with a bunch of people, and it's crazy. I mean, yelling and screaming and Tetris is flying everywhere, people throwing items at each other. The best is you can make teams, which could be even more fun. Yeah, we didn't even try that. Yeah, and everyone, to choose teams, you like, you have Team Link and Team Mario and Team Balloon Fighter and Team Ice Climber, and oh, it's good. It's good stuff. All right, so the the Wi-Fi, you can only, oh, that's the other thing. In wireless mode, I think you can play all the, a lot of different modes. Yeah, we've only, we only really play, uh, Touch or push mode. Yeah, but uh, online on Wi-Fi, you can play a lot fewer modes than you can with normal wireless. Um, you can only play two-player Tetris with no items, four-player Tetris with items, and push, which is a two-player game no matter what. Now, push. push. Push is a is a revolution in gaming, as far as I'm concerned. Push is perhaps the greatest two-player Tetris game ever created. The way this works is you have one column, one full column, and one player, both players look to themselves like they're on top of the column, but really, one guy sees it flipped vertically. So your top is, your bottom is the other guy's top. So it looks to you like there are pieces that are out of your control, coming from below, cramming into the bottom of your Tetris J game going on. And there are two... Tiny one by one blocks at the bottom of each of at the bottom middle area of the screen, mm-hmm. and that's that, it. that's at the start. Yeah, and basically what happens is you drop pieces, and if your piece lands on another piece, then it stops, and you start to make tetrises. If you don't land a piece on something, it flies off into the ether, and you get a new piece. Yeah, if you you can drop pieces right through the board out the other side, and nothing happens, and you get a new piece. So if there's a big hole in the board, and you get pieces you don't like, you can just throw them down the hole until you get something you want. Here's the catch. If you make more than one line at a time, you get a double, a triple, a Tetris, it moves the whole board, every single Tetris piece, down. So if you get a Tetris, it moves every single piece on the board down four spaces. In the background, it's all Donkey Kong. So there's a little level markers. It's like 0, 1, 2, and then, you know, minus 1, minus 2. Then there's a danger zone. So... You're making a board of Tetris, and you're putting pieces on top, and the other guy is putting pieces on the bottom, and you move the whole board down, which gives you a bigger amount of room to work with to make Tetrises, and it shrinks the other guy's room to work with to make Tetrises. And that that gets really cool, because that's how you kill him. Yeah, basically, when you push the other guy into his top completely, you win. It's over. However, there's a certain amount of strategy in push. You see, it is still one board. The other guy can use your pieces against you. Let's say I stack up and I'm ready for a Tetris and I've got to put the long p- 
piece on the side and I get a Tetris. And I've also done the same thing. So we basically got a whole solid board with one row completely empty all the way through on the far left side, let's say. Well, if anyone drops a long piece down this hole, it's going to fly right out the other side and no Tetrises are going to happen. So what do you do? Well, you're going to have to block it up. Uh, now, here's the thing. Let's say I just put a piece on top of that hole. The other guy drops two long pieces down to it. And I built up that big block to make Tetris, and he got the Tetris using those pieces I set up, and it moves the whole board up, and I'm in trouble. You have to use the L pieces to make triple lines while also making the L piece completely disappear and thus leaving the hole so the other guy can't get a Tetris, but you get a triple and you move the board down. That's pretty much the only strategy I found for beating the situation in which there is a vertical column that is empty. But there's more strategy to it than that, and Push is, Push is a really exciting game of two-player Tetris. Now, there are a few little uh, kinks to this Tetris game that I don't think any of them detract from the game at all, but they're definitely there, and they make Tetris a little bit different. The one thing, people have been calling it infinite spin. Basically, you are almost entirely free to keep moving a piece around once it hits the bottom into any configuration you want before it sets. Mm -hmm. Now, that might sound stupid until you realize that in classic Tetris, the game starts out really, really ass slow, like dit, 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 and it slowly speeds up. This game starts right away going pretty fast. So that way, uh, and some Nintendo people even said this, this way you can jump right into the action and the game's quick immediately, but you're not completely hosed if you just happen to put a piece in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. And two, you have a sideboard. You can hit R to pop a piece into it. And then any time you hit R again, it'll pop that piece out and pop whatever piece you had out into it. And there are many possibilities for this. Yeah, so basically if you get a long piece, but it's not ready for Tetris time yet, you can hold on to it, and then when it's time for Tetris, you pull that out and wham! Or you get a green piece, and it doesn't fit anywhere, and you don't want to put it down, pop it in, and then drop it out later when you made a hole for it. Yep. So usually what happens is I'll get a piece I don't want, I'll put it in, I'll get another piece, I'll put that on the board, then all of a sudden the other piece fits, I take it out... It adds a little dimension to the game that I really enjoy. The final thing about this Tetris is that you can see six pieces into the future, unless there's a boo, but don't worry about boo. Yep. Boo, uh, boo's awesome. I don't take too much advantage of that yet, in that usually all I do is I, I, out of the corner of my eye, keep an eye on it, and I see when a long piece is coming up. That's, well, that's, the, that's the beginning strategy of, see, of the six-piece uh, future, but the real strategy to use is you look at those six pieces that are coming up, you want to set up the board. If you see a piece that's over there that will basically ruin you if it gets onto the board, use the pieces before it, because you know what they're going to be, to create a situation to where every piece is always a good piece and no piece will ever fuck you. Like, let's say you've got a rampart, basically. You've got, you've got no, like a whole bunch of little jaggies and no like flat area of land at the top. And, and you, you see, see a square, the square coming. coming. Now, there's nowhere to put that square on your current board that won't fuck you. So use all the other pieces to make some flat land for it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't see a square coming, you know, I mean, if there's a square, if there's no square in the next area, you know that it's more than six pieces away. Feel free to not make any area for a square to go. You can, you know, make a not as good Tetris and you'll be just fine because there's no squares coming. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you can read more in that article that I talked about, which we'll link to. You can read, all, the guy talks all about this stuff. Yep. And why they decided that it's not actually Nintendo, it's a feature of all Tetrises. It's kind of like a standards uh, committee or consortium, only it's for a game instead of something real. It is something real. At least it should be. Yeah. I, I, I don't really know what else we can say about Tetris. It's a very simple game that for some reason, well, I can think of a lot of reasons, is just immensely awesome. I it's can probably, say this. I mean, there are a million similar type games, but Tetris really is one of the best. The best. You know, it, it pretty much comes down to this. If you have a Nintendo DS and you don't have Tetris, you should go get Tetris, even at $35. And you should probably get it for 30 somewhere. It's totally worth it. If you don't have a Nintendo DS, you should buy a Nintendo DS and then buy Tetris. Or else, um, you're dumb. And that was Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for our opening theme. Be sure to visit our website at www.frontrowcrew.com. If you like our podcast, you'll love our forums. Make sure you visit them. You can send your email feedback to geeknights at gmail.com. And if you want, you can leave us a voicemail at 
333-1537. Geek Nights airs every weeknight, Monday through Thursday. Geek Nights is recorded with absolutely no studio and no audience. But unlike those other talk shows, it's actually recorded at night. <laughs>